Hi, this is Michael Shin with Evolve Electrical, and today I'm going to walk you through the new conduit bend optimization tools and how they can be used inside of a switchgear room. So as you can see on the screen here, here's just a simple switchgear room that, we, that we've modeled. Uh, in a scenario, we got all different conduit racks, different sizes, um, and now we're ready to truly optimize this run for true prefabrication. At this phase of the project, our workflow we recommend is don't worry about uh, optimizing and placement of couplings during the drawing phase. Draw in all your conduits, get them all in as fast as you, as you can, faster than the pipe and duct guys, of course. And then once that area or that portion of the model has been signed off, then you're gonna go back and optimize your runs. So at this point, floor has been signed off, switch room is signed off. We're now ready to optimize our runs and get these ready for, for our spool drawings and get them out to the prefab shop. So in my view here, what I'm gonna quickly do is actually just turn off all the hangers in my view. I made a simple little rule here to quickly hide all my hangers in my view. And now you can see all the different bends that we have in our, in our view here. What we're gonna do is utilize our new bend commands, these six new features called optimized bend commands. We have optimized bend consume adjacent, optimized bend consume selected. We have align bends, reset bends, as well as align couplings. This one we already had, which was place couplings, which is an enhancement to all these other commands we have here. So what we're gonna do, let's work with this first, first rack that we have here. I'm gonna click onto the optimized bend consume adjacent. Puts me into a multiple selection mode, allows me to click the first two uh, con uh, conduits. I can also click onto these two if I wanted to as well. I'll click finish. What the tool is now gonna automatically do is extend the tail and the nose on both of these bends. Uh, if I click undo, you'll see what it's done is it actually extended this side over to that end and vice versa. What's really cool about this feature is that it gives you tons of different controls on what the output of how it's gonna be. Since I selected both sides, uh, it kind of randomly picked which side to go towards. Uh, I also have the ability to use consume selected, which allows me to pick onto um, these two bend families here, click finish, and then say, all right, just, just optimize this section here. So basically remove just those straight pieces there. So that's what the consume selected does. It allows you to select which side of the bend you want to consume. Consume adjacent is going to extend both sides of it. So if I do this again with consume adjacent, I click finish. It's going to extend both sides to its maximum amount of length that it can possibly go. Same thing here. Let's click onto these two bends again click finish, it's gonna extend those to its maximum available length. In this scenario, it had only just a few inches to go. What's really cool about these tools is it's gonna automatically remove that straight segment that's here. So again, let's do the same thing, consume adjacent, window select these two, click finish. It's gonna extend this to its maximum length of 10 feet or less than that based on what how far it can possibly go, as well as extend the nose or the tail to its maximum available length. Same thing over here, we'll say consume adjacent, I'll window select these two, click finish, and it extends those two. Totally up to you as the end user, you probably could in this scenario probably window select the whole thing and say consume adjacent and see what, at what results you might get. What I'm doing from a demo state, state here is just quickly just clicking on to multiple different little segments, clicking finish, and making sure that the result that I'm looking for matches what I'm looking for uh, from an end user standpoint. So I'll, let's do the, this panel here, we'll do the same thing. I'll say consume adjacent. Again, consume adjacent seems to be my favorite out of the whole group here. It's gonna extend uh, all of the tails and nodes to its maximum available length. It's also retaining all of the conduit run information that's, in, that's stored inside of those segments. Really cool, what I just did there really fast was notice that here's all of your straight pieces. All of those have also been removed and the tail and no ha nose has been extended. A couple of other cool tips you can do. Since there's so many straight segments in here, you can also turn off your conduit straights and just see just the bends and see how those are actually interacting with. Same thing here. So I can say, all right, consume adjacent, window select this little group. Actually, you know what? Let's grab all of these. Click finish. And all again, all I did to get this visibility here, I turned off conduits, which is your straight segments. 
the tool is still going to work. It's going to recognize, it still knows that there are straight segments there uh, that are attached to those conduits. So there, it's now extended all those out. So a cool little trick you can do, makes it a little bit easier from a visibility standpoint, is to just turn that conduit straight segment off. All right, those are all nice and straight. And now it's finish up the rest of this switch gear here. I'm trying to move as little as possible with my view, so hopefully you guys are not getting dizzy following me along here. Uh, yeah, let's just grab all of these here. So keep grabbing these stub 90s as well. Cool. We'll click finish. And let's see what the result that we get there. So again, that's why the consumer adjacent selected gives you control over which side you want it to extend to. Uh, so that came out just the way I wanted it. Extended all those out. Perfect. A couple little straight segments here. So now we have the control. If I were to now turn back uh, on my condo, as you can see, all this, uh, all of these different uh, bends that we have here. Pretty cool. So now let's get into the, into the state of now aligning our bends to where we want our couplings all nice and aligned. Uh, so for example here, a couple cool things you can do. Uh, let's say, for example, I want all of the bends that are coming out of, out of these panels to all be nice and aligned. I want them all aligned to maybe, let's say, this one here. So we can utilize that one as our benchmark. So that's what we're gonna align all of our couplings to, we'll say, is this one here. So to do that, I'll utilize our align couplings command. It is a fitting to fitting scenario here, and the tool is still gonna honor this very well. So I can click the first one. This tells the tool, align all of the bends to that first reference plane that I, that I picked onto. What it's going to do is it's also, since it's got fitting to fitting scenario, it's going to know to extend the tails and the nose of the other, uh, of the other bends. So notice that none of the bends or anything, anything really moved in terms of the straight pieces. It extended the tail and nose accordingly. So in here, it can now turn on uh, all the couplings. So you can now see the couplings turn on based on the nest of the coupling that's inside there. And the same thing applies down here. We can do the same thing. I can say, I want all the bends to align to that first one I clicked onto. Slight little process, doing a lot of math behind the scenes for us that we don't have to worry about anymore. And uh, same thing, I'll turn on the couplings and we'll turn on the couplings for that kit 90 as well. Really cool how fast you're able to uh, work with these tools here. Uh, same thing, let's see what we have here. So we got a a stub 90, we got a, we got a short one here. Uh, now you have different controls that you, that you can work on here in this scenario is, well, maybe I don't like what it, what it did here. Maybe I want uh, this to be a full 10 foot stick. So what you're able to do here is actually use our reset bend. Let's reset these two bends here and click finish. It's prompting us because it's got, it's fitting the fitting the fitting. So it's, hey, there's no conduit straight for us to recognize what type of conduit system this is or a what system family to place in here. So this is displaying all the available system types. I'll click OK, and now it knows what straight segment of a straight conduit to, to place in there. So that's now basically what I did, that, that bend that I first selected onto, uh, it basically put all of the tail and nose to its minimum default length. Now I can say, all right, well, you know what? I want to consume adjacent, or sorry, consume selected. I want these two bends here to extend down into that piece of equipment. So that way it keeps, basically keep that spot here. That's where the spot that I like. I want those to align there. And I want these two bends now to extend and connect to those bends. So I'm gonna use consume, uh, consume adjacent, click onto those two, click finish. Then you can now see it's now extended those out. What these tools do, it gives you all the different flexibility from the end user to determine where do you want your couplings placed as well as where do you want them aligned to. As opposed to other softwares that I've worked with before, you select one end and say, all right, place couplings every 10 feet, and what you see is what you get. Whereas this now gives you the power to control exactly where you want all your different bends and couplings to be placed. Cool, let's now work in this section over here. Uh, let's see what we've got here. You know, let's align all of these together. So I'll do the same thing. Align all of these bends to the first one that I selected onto. Click finish. So I'm going to pull those back. All right, so let's turn on our couplings. Same thing down over here. 
but to actually isolate those, you can see them in our view a bit better here. Let's get all these nice and aligned as well. So I'll say align couplings to this first one, click finish, pulls those back. Now those are all nice and aligned. Do the same thing here, turn on our couplings. And now let's reset our view so you can see how that looks. So now we've got a grouping of couplings here, nice and aligned, as well as here. Uh, if you wanted to get a little more critical, you probably could also do something like this, where you slide, maybe slide this over if you wanted to. Uh, that way you can move the couplings over so they're all nice and aligned to that one spot. Totally up to you uh, as the end user if you wanted to have this rack and this rack with those couplings aligned. Uh, notice that if I were to move this, it is moving things downstream because it's got a couple spots where it is fitting to fitting, and that's just native Revit moving uh, connected elements together. So that's where uh, reset bend would allow you to basically reset these bends, basically put them back to its shortest length, but fill in the gap with a straight piece. Now I have the control to maybe slide this rack over if I wanted to do different controls that you're looking for. Uh, we then on this top rack, we can place couplings along that one. So I'll use the place coupling tool, change of direction to how it just goes straight, uh, placing them every 10 feet. So it's now got a 10 foot segment and then so on and so on throughout your model. I think we're just about done here. Let's see what else we've got. A couple other spots anywhere else we should line some couplings up with. Uh, I know what, maybe we can get, uh, let's see, let's do this again. Let's turn off our view and see, maybe we need to align some couplings to a couple of different spots. Yeah, you know, maybe we can extend and align this rack here with those couplings in that spot. So maybe we'll say, all right, I want everything that I'm gonna select onto here to align with this spot. Actually, let me remove him, let's give this a shot. Let's see what the end result is we have here. So that's now extended those, pretty cool. So those are all nice and aligned. We can do the same thing. We can turn uh, on our, our couplings here. And we do the same thing. Let's see, couplings are all nice and aligned. Uh, we could probably do the same thing here. We just should have enough. Yeah, it's got plenty of space to go with. So let's align that one to this. So I'll grab these two. Again, the first one you click on to sets the reference plane. The second one you click on to then moves those couplings over. So now those are all nice and aligned. Uh, tons of different controls that you're, that you're looking for as I rotate this around. Maybe do the same thing here. Uh, let's do a quick test here. I'm actually going to reset this scenario here. So reset that one back, and then that now allows us to then place the couplings. Uh, what's great about these bend families is that, that by resetting it, it's now put it all back to its minimum tail and nose length. Based on where this stub 90 is, it's technically at the minimum nose length, and which, is, which does not align, it's, it's off by a few more inches, with the, the other uh, uh, couplings and conduits here. So it's now up to you if you wanted to come in and override those so you can override it so it's it is going to move it back but note that by moving it back now it it turned off the minimum nose length and has shortened it up but you, at least you are seeing exactly what you're looking for and uh, it's giving you instant data back uh, uh, on your view so cool we now have our switch gear room all nice and optimized for our view uh, I'm going to turn off, we'll put our view back to a fine here, so that way it gets rid of those boxes. So now you can see exactly how everything is all set up in our view here. Uh, full control now to make sure you got all your couplings turned on in different segments. That way those are turned on there. Uh, we can check and make sure that these are also on. Pretty cool. Uh, let's do this same thing here. Let's turn on uh, those couplings in that spot. So those are all nice and aligned. Uh, up to you. Again, if you wanted to make some adjustments here, let's do the same thing. Let's align this rack here. So let's make sure those all align together. So use the alignment tool. Oop. Note when you're working with these, make sure that your conduit bend detail view is set to medium. That way it allows you to align your couplings. Click finish. There we go. So now these are all nice and aligned. Nice and pretty looking. And everything else, everything else from there all, is all nice and aligned as well. So all of these different bend optimization tools gives you all the tools that you're looking for for making a true prefabrication model. 
as well as making it so you can draw faster than the pipe and duct guys, and as well as then be able to do more prefab and more BIM. So thank you very much for uh, watching the uh, bend optimization tools uh, inside of a switchgear room.